Hi everyone, so today we are going to discuss a problem involving the floor function and functional equations. Um, floor function is one of my most favorite functions and uh, this particular problem was asked in the IMO a few years ago. And what's beautiful about this is we are not asked to use some really insane or really rigorous techniques to solve this functional equation. But it just involves some simple substitution strategies and just in building up upon that. You know, building up upon that using a little bit of intuition here and there to kind of like get to the end result. And if you're really able to understand this question, I think that is, uh, that, that, that would be great, right? So without wasting any time, let's just begin. So this is the problem number one from the IMO in 2010. And uh, in this video, we're going to discuss the substitution strategy in functional equations. How do we deal with functional equations that involve the floor function or the greatest integer function? And then obviously we have book sessions for senior math Olympiads and at the end, a similar charging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to find all functions f defined on reals to reals so that for all reals x comma y it satisfies this given functional equation. So we have f of the floor of x times y is equal to f of x times the floor of f of y. Right? And if you think that the floor function is actually going to complicate this, no, it's actually going to simplify this because, uh, for example, if, we, if I ask you floor of 7.9, you're going to say it's 7. If I ask you the floor of 7.5, again, you're going to say 7. So for multiple values of x, we're essentially getting the same output. So it's actually going to somewhere down the line simplify our problem instead of, you know, complicate it. If you're actually able to solve this um, using concepts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're first going to try and substitute some simple values like, like we always do. So x equals to 0 and y is equal to 0 is always a great starting point. And many times actually realize that just by the simple substitution, you'll be able to get a result which is very helpful just by this. Whenever you see any functional equations problem, if you just sub in x equal to 0, y is equal to 0, in most cases, in a lot of cases, you'll actually see some tangible outcome coming out of it. Now, when I substitute this x0, y0, I'll get f of 0 is equal to f of 0 times uh, the floor of f of 0. Right? And then you can very well see what we are what we are working with here. So I can take f of zero common. I'll be left with floor of f of zero minus one, right? This is equal to zero. So I can just substitute. I can just you know kind of just divide it into two cases, right? Case one will be where this floor of f of zero is equal to one, and obviously case two will be when f of zero is equal to zero, right? So let's first deal with case number one. Now, in case number one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put y is equal to zero. Why did I do this? What's the intuition behind this? If you actually notice, this is the floor of f of zero. If I put y is equal to zero over it, I'll again get the floor of f of zero. So it so happens to be one. So y is equal to zero is actually a great substitution. And when I do that, I'll get f of zero is equal to f of x times the floor of f of zero, which was what I was referring to earlier. But that's equal to one, right? This is equal to one. So f of zero is essentially f of x times one, which is f of x. So basically f of x is f of 0, it's a constant value. f of x is a constant function because f of 0 is going to be a constant, right? We have a function f, you're plugging in x equals to 0 at all x. So essentially you're going to get a constant value, right? But can we define this c such that it has some nice properties? So actually notice the floor of f of 0 is 1, right? The floor of f of 0 is equal to 1. And f of 0, I'm assuming it to be c, right? So essentially the floor of c is equal to 1. So c is between... 1 and 2, right? I think that's just, that's just purely from the definition of the floor function. So basically, we have this solution f of x equal to c such that c is between 1 and 2. Or essentially, the greatest integer function of c is 1. Right? That's just another way to say it. So this is one solution that we obtained. And you can really plug this into the function and see that this actually works out. Right? This is a valid solution. Okay, so this is the first and the only solution from case number 1. Now we simply move on to case number 2. What was case number two? F of zero is equal to zero, right? As simple as that. F of zero is equal to zero. Now what do we do? Now we're going to use a second substitution, which is x equals to y is equal to one. X one, y one, right? The second most common thing that we can maybe think about. 
and just play with zeros and ones over here in the starting at least and then you can go on to substitute like zero and x zero and y x and x y and y x and y y and x and just play around with that but essentially you know when we start our functional equations we like to substitute smaller values 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 you know stuff like that and in 99.99% of cases you'll actually see very nice simplification of the question over here but now as I substitute x equals to y is equal to 1 I will get f of 1 is equal to f of 1 times the floor of f of 1 again amazing again like a similar kind of a structure we are forming so again I can factorize this f of 1 out I'll get the floor of f of 1 minus 1, obviously. And that's obviously equal to 0. So again, we can just subpartition them into two subcases. So subcase A and subcase B, right? Because essentially we are dealing with case number 2. This case A and case B that I'm going to consider are going to be subcases under case number 2, right? So case A is f of 1 is equal to 0. And needless to say, then case B will be when floor of f of 1 is equal to 0. Floor of f of 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, but for case A, we're considering f of 1 is equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug in x equals to 1. Why x equals to 1? Because you just notice the original functional equation. I plug in x equals to 1, I get f of 1, right? As simple as that. So I plug in x equals to 1, that's kind of the intuition over here. And when I do that, I'll get f of y is equal to f of 1 times the floor of f of y. But f of 1 is 0, right? So you get f of y is 0 for all y. In other words, f of x is equal to 0 for all x. So no matter what value of x you're plugging in, the function is always giving an output is equal to 0, which is another solution, right? It's another valid solution. So till now, we have two solutions. We had f of x equal to c, such that c is between 1 and 2, 1 included, 2 excluded. And then we have f of x is 0 for all x. But till now, we have obviously two solutions. Both of them are valid. You can just plug this into the original functional equation. And you can see that both of them are actually very true. Now we move on to subcase B, right? Subcase B was when this floor function is equal to one, right? So when this floor of f of one is equal to one. And just to remind you, this subcase A and subcase B are under the case two, right? We're dealing with subcases rather. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to again plug in y is equal to one because again, we have something like this in the functional equation. We have floor of f of y. So again, I just plug in y is equal to one. I get some similar structure, right? I'll get the floor of uh, um, f of the floor of x actually, and that will be equal to f of x times the floor of f of one. But floor of f of one isn't that equal to one? It is. So basically, what's happening over here is that f of x is equal to f of floor of x, right? And the other, I think that's just amazing because any number x can be just represent can be just like replaced with the floor of that function of that value so for example f of 1 by 2 will what will what will be it'll be f of uh, the floor of 1 by 2 what's the floor of 1 by 2 it's 0 so f of 1 by 2 is essentially f of 0 that is why i was saying initially that this is going to be helpful to us this floor thing if it is in a functional equation it most of it is actually helpful because it's reducing down the number of possibilities for us and right? we can just interchange between values like this it's so cool right it's amazing it is so this result is, um, it, it's very great. And I'm going to mark this as number one. We might need this ahead. Now what I'm going to do, if you actually notice, this gives me the liberty to kind of use fractions as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in x equals to two, y is equal to half. Because I know that whenever we have a fraction, the floor will deal for itself, right? Whatever will happen, the floor will handle. And then essentially we'll get an integer because the greatest integer of one by two is zero, right? And then I substitute this, I'll get f of 1. f of 1 is equal to f of 2 times the floor of f of half. Times the floor of f of half. Now, I think this is very amazing. Because, because, I can actually see what is going to happen over here. This is simply going to become the floor of f of 0. Why? Because if you just notice, f of 1 by 2, like I said earlier, it is going to be equal to f of the floor of 1 by 2. So essentially, f of 1 by 2 is going to be equal to f of 0. In other words, the floor of f of 1 by 2 is going to be the floor of f of 0. Like I said over here, the same thing essentially. So this essentially becomes f of 1 is equal to f of 2 times the floor of f of 0. f of 1 is equal to f of 2 times the floor of f of 0. Right? But it so happens that we are dealing with the subcase b, right? 
we are dealing with the sub case b and this sub case b is under the larger case number 2 but in case number 2 we have assumed f of 0 to be 0 right so we know for a fact that f of 0 is going to be 0 that implies the floor of f of 0 will also be 0 right cuz if i just assume f of 0 to be k we know that k is equal to 0 so obviously floor k will also be 0 right that's i think pretty obvious so basically what is happening is this this term over here this is being 0 so f of 1 is essentially f of 2 times 0 so essentially f of 1 is equal to 0 right i think that's uh, that's great but do you actually notice something for this sub case for this sub case where it go for this sub case we had the floor of f of 1 to be 1 right so over here we had the floor of f of 1 to be equal to 1 but from here i will get the floor of f of 1 to be 0 f of 1 is 0 if a quantity is 0 the floor of that quantity will also be 0 right but under the sub case we are under the assumption that floor of f of 1 is equal to 1 that is the sub case b that we are talking about right so isn't this a direct contradiction yes it is a contradiction and therefore no solutions for sub case b so our only two solutions that we found were from sub case a under case number 2 and from case number 1 so therefore the only solutions are f of x is equal to c for some c such that c is between 1 and 2 any real number in that particular range and we have f of x is equal to 0 so both of these functions satisfy our given functional equation so i think that was a really beautiful problem and like i said before the floor function any special functions really they can you know very well help us to simplify down the problem you know and i think uh, this step over here this one where we figure out the value of f of 1 half will be f of 0 and you can really play around with this this will be valid for any fraction really so i think that was great and i could have plugged in any fraction right i plugged in 2 and 1 half you could have just played around with that and still have gotten to an answer so that is why it's great even doesn't matter what substitution you using anyways coming up to the answer in one way or the another and the substitution that we have used they were just very fundamental very elementary right no no like random substitution in fact we didn't even have to substitute for any variable If you actually notice, we are always substituting some constant: zero comma zero, one comma one, two and one by two. We are always substituting the constant. That is what makes this equation great, right? You can solve this without any kind of complication. Just substitution and just intuitively building up upon that to get to a final solution. And we have two functions, two elementary functions that satisfy our given functional equations. So yeah, I hope you really like that and learn something from. Okay, so you are some book sessions of senior math Olympiads. I am a compendium, polynomials by Barbeau, elementary number theory by Sierpinski, graph theory by Harari, combinatorics by Brualdi, secrets and inequalities, and functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, and uh, here's a similar but challenging problem, and I want you to determine all functions f defined from integers to integers, so that for integers a comma b, this functional equation is satisfied. This is also an IMO problem. I'm probably quite sure you have seen this if you are interested in functional equations. This is in fact a problem from IMO 2019, I believe. I think it was problem number one or problem number four, one of these, P1 or P4. But it's actually a very nice problem, and again, you're just using some kind of elementary substitutions and then building up upon that, which I think very important when solving functional equations. So maybe give this a go, and if you're able to solve it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye bye. Inta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics, and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last ten years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympians. from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com